everybody. Welcome back to Enter Tournament of Champions podcast. Uh, this is the podcast where we take our favorites in movies and games and skirpas and derps, and we put them in a tournament against each other, uh, which we occasionally take a break from like we do this week. <laughs> so uh, this week we're just going to list out uh, 10 movies we haven't seen, um, basically, and we'll explain. We'll explain. We'll further explain the concept as we go along. But I'm Jeff. I'm one of uh, three guys who talks on this show and i'm joined by kyle and kyle's over there yeah I, i'm over here and i talk sometimes when it's my turn yeah he talks when it's his turn and then we got jd who's uh you know he's over there no i'm just i'm a, I'm a fun guy yeah yeah mm. mm-hmm. there's gonna be a lot mm-hmm. of that we could today. be a choir of mm-hmm, if you allowed us to be mm-hmm. so <laughs> mm-hmm. we can do that a whole episode man <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, I could do wow. judging wow. ones, agreeing ones, and uh, speculative, speculative ones. Yeah. So. <laughs> and this will probably be the short episode of the week. Uh, I don't know that we'll do a review episode for the week that this episode comes out. Um, I can't imagine a movie. I'm trying to picture a movie that's coming out. Red Sparrow, I guess, but I don't know. You guys, do will, it. I don't expect you guys to rush out to see Red Sparrow. So that's. I am. Yeah, I'll be. I'll be seeing that. Okay. Uh, either Thursday or Friday for sure. I will see it if you guys come back and go. That was a good movie, guys. Oh, okay. I go, okay. I'll go see and if it not, JD and I can just do a quick one, like a quick review, just so there's something out there. Because yeah, fuck good. it, you know. Or we can do mute. We can just shit all over that movie. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could, yeah, we could do an episode that's kind of like all three of us, and when we talk, because JD and I saw Game Night too, so that's oh yeah, yeah. one worth mentioning. They all haven't gotten to me if like, I should go see that or not, dude. Oh, yeah, uh, don't spend money on it, I guess, if you yeah. don't have to. I mean, if you can wait, wait. I can wait. Yeah, it's funny. It's just you've really you've funny. seen you've seen half the movie already because of the trailer. Like, unfortunately, okay. wow. that's yeah, dumb. yeah. yeah. What what's really cool about it? It does it does the directors do create a uh, one of one of which is a director uh, from Freaks and Geeks. John, the, the John Francis Daly, yeah, man. Fr- John yeah. Francis Daly from Freaks and Geeks, the lead, uh, and uh, they created something really cinematic with the action sequences sometimes. So that was really cool in theaters. But like, there's not enough of it for me to go, Kyle. You really need to see it in theaters. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just every few few and far between. There's there's a really cool little action sequence that you're like, oh, nobody's done that before in a comedy, uh, which Pretty is Pretty much rad. for, like, comedies now, like, you would have to come back and go, um, that was, or like, for getting Sarah Marshall Lovers of Funny, you should go see that in theaters. I'll go, oh, okay. Um, yeah, comedies just don't get enough. my butt in seats. And, um, no. Until I get a movie pass. Uh, I'm not paying $13 to go see a comedy, you know? Understandable, yeah. yeah. Unless it, unless it's just, like, like I said, it's just that next level for getting Sarah Marshall level. Yeah, exactly. If people are like, Lunch. that's one of the funniest comedies ever, period. Like, yeah, go Oh, see okay, it. cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll go check that out. <laughs> Game Night's just a little bit above what we've been getting every year. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty cool. much... Well, the, that's good. That means we're on the right track. <laughs> yeah, I think so. There's potential. And I can see why DC... Uh, was like, hey, we got to get these guys for the Flash because they do interesting things with action and they can do comedy and character. Um, but cool. DC's probably going to end up fucking them out of that movie anyway, so who cares? <laughs> right, right. Uh, more people have left that uh, movie uh, than uh, the, any other movie I've ever known in my entire life. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so crazy. That Talk and, about uh, Kryptonite for directors. That, that's that movie right there. Somebody left another movie, not a DC movie, but like a movie that's been in production forever and you're like... Nobody's going to make this movie. Um, it might have been a video game movie. I can't remember. Uh, whatever. We're, we were talking Whedon and Batgirl, right? No, or that one. Even that. I, that might have been even the first in production time they right? officially said, hey, we're going to do this movie. Was oh, okay. uh, I'm thinking of something else. Um, but anyway, today we're going to talk about... Uh, this is the first time we're going to do this, and we're probably going to try to do this once a year until we run out of 10 movies that we need to see. Uh, which I don't think will ever happen, honestly, for me. I mean, there's so yeah. many movies in existence that so many movies praise all the time. Unless I take a firm stand, I'm like, I'm never watching a movie before 1960, guys, get over it. Um, <laughs> you know, we should never be able to run out of movies. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, this time, uh, this episode, we are just talking about each three of us compiled a list of 10 movies that we have been meaning to see, like, pretty much our entire lives or most of our lives. Um, some of us might have a movie from the 2000s that we just missed and everybody won't stop talking about, and that's... That's the case for me, at least. I have like a couple 2000s movies. Um, but yeah, these, these, this is just a good time to try to <laughs> buckle down and see these fucking movies. Because <laughs> otherwise, we're just still like, God, I still need to see that, you know? Like, and we just keep talking about it uh, out of context, out of the show. Like, we don't have a reason to put a lot of these into the show, you know? There's right. mm-hmm. sometimes we just don't talk about these genres or sure. that these movies belong in. So 
it's a good time to just really strap in and fucking watch these goddamn watch put your put your big boy pants on and and you know <laughs> watch movies that uh, you can't live without basically uh so each of us like i said each of us came up with 10 we're i mean i listed mine alphabetical i know jd did too jd done did it too yeah done did it uh, um if i don't have to go first i can do that real quick <laughs> oh okay gotcha yeah i think the order this time just for yeah we're still gonna go one by one like we do in top 10 episodes uh yeah kyle you're last so you're good okay um yeah. so that's kind of it's just pure happenstance right there. That's serendipitous. All right. Serendipitous. Yeah. Serendipitous. <laughs> and if we... There, obviously, there's no pushing this episode, but I'm just going to play the song anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. There it is. And... Uh, <laughs> it would never die. Uh, if we do synchronize, that's cool. We can just talk about that one movie and what we've heard about it briefly, basically. And if one of us has seen it, then we can be like, hey, I think you'll like it because of this reason or whatever, uh, which would be cool. Anyway, um, so this is interesting. This is going to be fun because uh, we're going to come back to this topic later, and I'll explain that at the end. Uh, all right, so I'll, I start off this week. So my first one, just alphabetically speaking, is Brazil. Mm-hmm. You guys have that? I do. Uh, I do, Same yeah. Spot. Oh, Same wow. Spot. Same spot. Yep. I mean, yeah, obviously, because we're going in alphabetical order. <laughs> wow, look at that. None of us p- yeah. picked a name. Clean, synchronized. Nice. Three ways. That never happens on like episodes where on genres <laughs> like we all agree on. You know, yeah. That's kind of yeah. crazy. <laughs> What I don't even know. I, I, it's just I work with somebody who's a big time cinephile. I might end up having him on the show eventually, honestly, because um, he's a fucking he's a smart guy. He's a really smart analytical dude, and this is one of his favorite movies, like of all time, like legitimately. Uh, he recommended his top three movies to me, and and two of them are in here, and this is one of them. Um, the other one, the third one, I've seen, and I'm like, yeah, that's a great movie. Uh, <laughs> But this one was one that he brought up, and and so many other people brought up, and it, apparently it's just a weirdest fuck movie. And I'm like, cool. I want to see a weirdest fuck movie. That's cool. Yeah, I like those. <laughs> Weir- the weirder, the better. <laughs> and I think we're all kind of familiar with the director. It's I think it's a Terry Gilliam movie. Is that right? Do you it guys- is. Yeah. yeah. I just uh, rewatched uh, Fear and Loathing, man. That was a uh, mind fuck. It's been like, it's been you like 10, 10, 15 years since I watched that movie. I forgot how fucking insane that was. I, it's a kind of a, a trippy movie, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. As, as we were describing earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Time Bandits is the same way. It's very, like, you would think it's kind of like, oh, this is like a fun, like, kids movie. It's not. It's a very dark, like, adult movie that just so happens to be a kid who's with a bunch of uh, dwarves? Tiny people? I'm sorry, I don't really know the term. Um, and uh, small, they... Um, small people? Small little, people? little people. God, I, don't re- I really don't know. Um <laughs> Lesser um, people. But yes, I think that's the PC term enter here for tinier person. Um, <laughs> God, this... and it's a very, it's a very trippy, weird, funny movie and stuff like. I, I really like this director, so I'm kind of surprised we've never seen this movie. This is apparently Brazil is part of a trilogy of imagination uh, that started with Time Bandits and went to Brazil, and then it went to oh. the Adventures of Baron Munchausen, uh, which is that. an '88 movie. Uh, Nine, 1989 Y release, but it was an 88 movie, so that's, I mean, that's gonna come up either this year or next year anyway, so. Uh, yeah, this dude, I've only watched, like, I watched Brothers Grimm, and that was fine. Um, I've seen Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, Parnassus? Penis? Mm-hmm. Penis. Parnassus. Penis. Yeah. Penises? Parnassus. Penises. And uh, I've seen 12 Monkeys, which I fucking love. Um, yeah. I like 12 Monkeys, yeah. Fear and Loathing I watched once when I was way too young to be like, oh, this is good. So, Dude, it's, you know, it's a weird rewatch. That, that's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's a come weird out, rewatch, man. It's a ninety-eight a weird movie. rewatch. Well, I'm sure it's a ninety-eight movie, so we're going to talk about it this year too. So, uh, oh, and Handy co-directed Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which is one of my favorite comedies of all time. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you know what? I kind of like that movie too. So funny to say that movie's really fucking funny. I love it. Uh, but yeah, that's. I mean, that's why I made my list is because of the the right people have recommended it to me. It's not like you have people that like Transformers movie recommending this movie to me. <laughs> like it's, it's, you know what I mean? Like like-minded film fans have been recommending this to me and won't stop doing it. And uh, I'm all about a weird dystopian sci-fi movie, man. You know, I got a few sci-fis in here. So, um, so yeah, that's why I put it in mind. And it sounds like you guys have had it recommended to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. By me? Or? <laughs> I'm just yeah, uh, mostly no, by you. Uh, by a lot of people. <laughs> and just uh, in general, I just, it's, I, I like this director, so you know, it's just oh. I've, I've always kind of seen it in his IMDb and I've heard about it, and 
heard about how trippy and weird it is, so I, it's always been in the back of my mind, and I'm glad we're doing something like this to kind of force force the hand of yeah. watching these movies. So absolutely, man, I'm pumped. I am pumped to get started on this. Uh, granted, we won't. I'm not gonna like rush to finish these. We got a few months to do this. So, uh, JD, you are next if you want to just list one. Okay. Um, next for me is uh, Casablanca, which mm. you know, it's a classic, I guess. Yeah, uh, I've, I've heard some seen. things. No, so, yeah, I've heard, I've yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right, that's right. You're like, okay, it's, it's, you just thought it was okay, right? Yeah, I thought it was fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's still, regardless of the quality of the movie, I think it's one of those that like I just need to knock it off the list because just yeah, I mean, it's a classic. So, right there we go. I don't really know a whole lot about it. Um, like story wise, it takes place in Cuba. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now I can't even remember. Holy shit. Oh man, um, it takes place during World War II, though. Morocco, Morocco, Morocco. That's go. right. Yeah. Um, it takes place during World War II, and there's an American guy who like runs a bar, um, and he's kind of torn between reclaiming the love of a woman he was once with, or helping her husband who is a uh, resistance leader or whatever. Okay. And um. That sounds like a short movie based on the premise, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like it should be. And that's I don't. Is it not very short? <laughs> no, it's not that it's long. It's 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 like ninety minutes long. It's not that long. Um, okay. I mean, I guess these movies, these older movies, they kind of run all the way to the end. You know, there's no like end credit sequence or whatever, or not sequence. I chose the wrong words. There's no end credits. Period. You know, they end the movie on a scene, and then they just roll the here's the title card of the studio, and that's it. <clears throat> you know, these old movies go, spend every minute. Uh, but uh, Kyle, have you seen Casablanca? Uh, I have not. It actually okay. almost made this list, and uh, your meh was just like, "Nah, I'm going to keep it off at them." <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get to it because you know, at some point, classics will just have to be, um, will have to be seen. But uh, I had other ones that sounded yeah. like they were going to be more entertaining watches, so I'm I put those on there. Apparently, one of the minority. Selfishly. So JD, I'm very curious to hear what you're going to think about it after you see it. We'll see. Because yeah, I thought it was fine. Uh, I, I think I, I it needs to be pointed out to me how influential the movie is because I don't know, just I don't know. Some parts of it bothered me. Some of it was really good, so I don't know. I mean, <laughs> is that why like it's, is that why it's revered? Is because it's viewed as influential, or Apparently, just because I, I okay? You know. I mean, I've seen like the major couple of scenes, I guess, the big quotes or whatever, um, just all throughout life. You see that? What's the that's the here's looking at you, right? Yeah, yeah that line. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, I really never was tuned into the story or like, oh, you got to watch it. It like impacted film like Citizen Kane did. And I'm like, ah, OK, I never heard that about it. I just I'd argue Citizen classic. Kane's way more. Interesting. I mean, I still see what happened in Citizen Kane yeah, more than I see I'm what saying, happened in Casablanca. That's for sure. I've never heard anybody say you got to watch Casablanca because it influenced film is what I mean. That's a, that's a good like, point. Yeah. Sorry, Kyle. What were you going to say? Uh, God, I, I, I really don't remember. Um, oh. Aww. Casablanca. I just hit the air horn. How about right that? Uh, <laughs> Casablanca, yeah. You, cause sometimes you can Blanc and sometimes you can Cas. Sometimes you put in Sometimes you can Cas, sometimes you can Blanca. Um, <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I don't like that uh, style of filmmaking, or that era of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. I don't like the the way that that guy talks. Like, he's looking at you. Can yeah. I, here you go. Hey, yeah, saying, like, a lot I've of never that. heard people talk like that in my life, so it's just like. This is fucking cartoonish to me. Uh, <laughs> so that's another big reason I didn't put it on there because it all just it all just seems silly to me. But yeah. like I'll have to get to it at some point. Like I get it; it's influential. I'll probably have to have it spelled out to me as as well of why it's influential. But um, I'll get to it. You know, whenever I run out of other movies that I want to see. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But soon as the re- for the rest of your life, man. See. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, I, you know, I, you know what I heard that like Tom and Jerry cartoons, yes. and like, <laughs> like that's what I mean by cartoonish. Like that's what I always remember hearing it, like uh, that context of that voice. So, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I guess cartoons are in that movie for me. <laughs> That's a good one for JD, at least one person to see that hasn't seen it, because I want, I do want a fresh opinion on that. Maybe I have to watch it again. Cool. I mean, you'll, you'll hey, tell I'll me. Love it. I'll be like, okay. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep my thoughts a total secret forever. <laughs> Don't tell me what you thought. Yeah. Of. I'll be like, uh, I watched Casablanca and uh, I. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I'm never gonna listen to recommendation from anybody Fuck. ever again. <laughs> uh, Kyle, do you have one you want to mention that's like next in your list or something? <clears throat> uh, I guess. No, I do. I have a uh, Citizen Kane. Ooh. Cool. Man. Yeah. So I guess I'm gonna watch that. It's so like good. 
Oh, Never seen it, so... Um, I, when I read about what it's about, I'm like, that movie sounds really boring. Um, yeah. So I never really got around to seeing it, so but I, I'm going to see it now, because now I have to. That's the bond. That's the that's the law. You know, that's what we're signing over to right now. So, yeah. uh, But I'm excited. You know, This is another one where I had to get some classics on here that I've just omitted my entire life for whatever reason. Um, again, it's not my particular favorite era of filmmaking, but um, I'm always willing to... Have my mind changed. And, Orson uh, Welles isn't the. Uh, I think this kid, did this come out the same year as fucking Casablanca? I just saw the Jesus. date and I was like, wait, is that the same? No, it's uh, Casablanca was the next year. Um, oh. But yeah, it's an Orson Welles movie, so I mean, he doesn't talk like that. Like he just, he kind of feels like a real person in the movie. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I didn't mean like for that era of filmmaking, just because of the talking. No, I mean that. it was rare. What you're talking about, it was a rare thing to have somebody natural on camera, just kind of talking. Oh wow! Well. So. so it, no. Yeah. I see what you're saying, yeah. Like him and Marlon Brando were kind of like game changers, especially Marlon Brando, who's kind of, you know walking around wow, on the waterfront. just like us. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> what like, he's like chewing gum, just talking, saying his lines like a normal person would, and you're like, oh my God, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> like That just like <laughs> kind of blew the doors wide open on what acting, what acting could be, basically. <clears throat> That's um, amazing. Citizen Kane kind of changed the way people tell stories, like filmmakers tell stories uh, and camera placement and stuff like that. Because there's some really, really cool stuff that he does with the camera that even to date I'm looking at it going, wow, that's really cool. Like you can see, you can see director's influence from this movie. Um, you, it's unquestionably present in the movie throughout. Um, and it's a nonlinear movie. Like everything's told in flashbacks because this movie starts and... Um, uh, Kane, uh, Orson Welles' character is already like passed away, so people are there's a Boy, newspaper like... that's like trying to get background information on him because he's sure. an elusive kind of billionaire, uh, more or less. Yeah, people right. just don't know his story, uh, so everybody that's telling stories about him, they're like, oh, I remember this one time, and then it goes it does a flashback to his life or whatever. Hmm. Kind of cool. And, like um, it's a timeless yeah. story, man. It's about a dude who had principles at one point, and then the more power, uh, not more power, but the more money he got, and the more people, other people in power. That he came across started to kind of force his hand and corrupt himself, like corrupt him in a certain way, oh, wow. um, and force him to compromise his ideals and stuff. And he became extremely bitter about it. And it's it's a fucking great movie, dude. I just think it is. Uh, cool. I'm excited then. You get me kind of thumb for it now. Straight so. two hours. Yeah, it's a good it's a good watch. I think um, there might be some slow moments. I mean, if when you compare it to like how these dramas unfold nowadays, but and that's always unfortunately the case as film evolves. You know. You can watch older movies and you're like, yeah, people mm-hmm. do it better nowadays. And it's kind of like, yeah, because we have all the resources. <laughs> like everything looks right. better. <laughs> right, right. But whatever. New is always better. Stinson out. It uh, is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> my That's a great pick, by the way. I'm excited to hear what you think about it. Uh, Noise. <clears throat> Noise. Fresh. Fair, fair, fair. Oh, damn it. I already have the air horn. You have there it. There we go. Yeah, you have it. There it is. <laughs> Um, so my next, the next one on my <laughs> list is, uh, is a 2002 movie. It's one of the more recent ones uh, that I have in my list. It's uh, city of God. Nice. You guys heard? Oh, of it? I, that's my number three. Yeah. It's oh. on my list as well. Oh, cool, man. Awesome. We're all going to see this one. So this we're is going to uh, all see this movie together. Well, that's yeah. two movies that we're Yay. all seeing together. This is a mo- This is a crime movie is my understanding. Uh, that, uh, it is a foreign movie. It's it takes place in Brazil. Um, but my, it, it's every every single time anybody mentions it, they talk about it being like, "Dude, you gotta see this movie!" Like every single time it's brought That's, up. Yeah, my uh, employee, he uh, I can't really let my people watch movies because I don't give a shit about anything. <laughs> um, so I like, co-watch movies all day, and uh, every once in a while I'll look over and I'm like, "Hey man, what are you watching?" He's like, "The City of God." And I'm just like, "Cool." He's like, "You never seen it?" I go, "No, I don't even know what that is." He's like, oh, "Man, come on, <laughs> you're a movie guy. Like you talk about movies on a podcast. Like you've never seen that movie." And I'm like. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what that is. He's just like, yeah, you got to see it. So I've I've just recently realized this movie even exists. <laughs> right. Like, that's how that's how new into my life this movie has has come. It's three, maybe four weeks ago. So. Yeah, I hear you. This is just another circumstance of the right people recommending it to me. Like, I, especially I listen to film podcasts, and mm-hmm. uh, this one podcast was going through. Uh, each episode they were doing like the best the best movie they were determining what is the best movie of a given year and they were voting at the end um, they weren't doing it tournament style they were just straight up voting what's their favorite movie and it could have been a crapshoot but in 2002 whenever this movie came out uh, three two uh, this movie was it was like unanimous like they all said City of God was the best movie of that year and I was like what? Oh, holy shit <laughs> I have to see this movie yeah yeah <laughs> And, you know, these are educated guys. Like, they've seen a shit ton of movies. So, 
for that to just jump out at number one for them. Um, yeah, I yeah, kind of kicking myself for not seeing it sooner, honestly. Um, so especially especially since I can sit down, it's easier for me to sit down and watch more current movies that you know kind of relate to in a certain way. Just I don't know, visually speaking. Um, JD, you got it in your list though too. How'd you hear about it? Yeah, um, I heard about it. Actually, I was just once we talked about this concept, just looking at some like top top fifty movies of all time. Yeah, saw okay. it come up there. I uh, was intrigued by it, and then both of you were just like, "Yeah, it's going to be on my list." And I was like, "All right, well, everybody, everybody's telling them it's the greatest fucking movie ever." Then who am I to disagree with that? So I might as well fucking throw it on there. <laughs> Fuck it, why not? We're doing it live. Book it, book it. Uh, JD, do you have one? What's the next Let's one for see. you? Let's see, because we went over. I had Citizen Kane on mine as well, so I'll be oh, watching that. Fuck yeah! All right. Cool. Um, oh, cool. N- next up for me is this is a big oversight for me. Um, Doctor Strange Love. Never Ooh, seen that's this my movie. next one. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, dude. Yes. Like, how have we both not seen this? Major like? <laughs> oversight. I've seen ninety percent of Martin Scorsese's movie, and this is one that I haven't. So, oh, this is uh, uh, Kubrick, Kubrick, bro. Uh, why did what did I, what did I say? <laughs> It's Scorsese. Scorsese. Oh God, that's gross. What did I say? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I meant Kubrick. it's okay. You, yeah, you, that's you've got Kubrick you've got Scorsese redemption. Yeah, you've got whatever. Scorsese that's, redemption on your that's list. A rookie, though. That's a rookie mistake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got a couple. I got a couple of those. So yeah, so it's fine. But yeah, man, this is like one of my big Kubrick oversights for yeah. sure. Big time um, for me. Yeah. I know some iconic scenes I've seen from it, but uh, like the Mind Fuhrer bit, which. It is out, yeah. out of context more often than it is in context for sure That's when you see movie? it pop up on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. It's Peter Sellers yeah. as the titular character. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He plays two cool. other characters too, and he's. I just know that like now I'll understand what that Armageddon like line is when he's talking about. It. He's like, you know, the guy who rides the bomb in, like. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, 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 that's the uh, uh, fuck. What's his name? Tex? Is his name Tex? Um, he's a <laughs> actor, Slim Pickens. I think that's his name. That's for real his name, Slim Pickens, and he is like the uh, like seriously legitimately like that character. Like when you see him and you're like, "God, what's with this guy? He's such a cartoon." That was how he was in real life. So um, That's fun. <laughs> so, uh yeah, I've I've studied the shit out of this movie cuz it's Kubrick. Like it's it's hard not to for me. Um there's so many podcasts and, and videos you can watch about it too cuz you do you are going to have to make sense of it even though it's like a 90 minute uh dark comedy satirical political <clears throat> satire movie uh which you could see influenced a lot of the ways that the Cohen brothers in particular tell comedy um yeah i had i had to do a ton of research on it cuz i was like what the fuck just happened like it's so good <laughs> and why does everybody chew gum it's crazy yeah um i love it and george c scott's in it and fucking <sighs> hates uh kubrick for for this movie he hates really? it so oh much. good because uh kubrick was like just he wanted him to go crazy like he wanted him to be a comedic actor and he was trying to play it straight because he's george c scott that's what he did that's what he did in Patton. it's you know um right. kubrick after fucking with actors wow. yeah, yeah no, i've never okay, heard right. of that before i didn't think that was his style yeah no he doesn't do that ever uh, but even at his younger age because this is like a 60s movie like this is pre yeah. clockwork orange right uh-huh. um, yeah. so even at that age, he was fucking with actors. <laughs> yeah, how funny <laughs> Which is, is that? crazy. Uh, but well, yeah, he, he was a perfectionist. He wanted, yeah. you know, that's how he wanted it. Yeah, he had his own vision and everything. And I wished, I mean, I wish George C. Scott was more open to doing a comedic comedic performance, but he wasn't. So therefore, Kubrick tricked him into doing it. He would be like, "Let's just, uh, you know, just do a take to, you know, exercise. You know, just, uh, you're just, you just, just do one, just do a crazy one. It doesn't matter. No way. Just, yeah." And he that's put how he, all, that's how he got him. Yes, that's he put all the crazy fucking takes George C. Scott did in the movie, and <laughs> instead of the serious so ones, he did. I bet he hated that. No wonder he hates him so much. Yeah, <laughs> of course. For it, uh, that is hilarious. so brilliant. Oh man, that you've you've given me a whole new. I didn't know any of that stuff, so it's, I'm, it's I'm very excited funny to too. Like the stuff, all the stuff in the uh, the war room, which isn't a thing, by the way. I think Ronald Reagan or somebody. One of the presidents was like, "All right, cool. Where's the war room at?" And everybody's like, "We don't have one of those." <laughs> <laughs> um, but everything in the war room is hilarious, uh, especially the president um, played again by Peter Sellers. He plays two, like three characters in this movie. Um, he has a phone call with one of the Russian diplomats about a potential nuclear war, and they're arguing about like, "How come you never call me to ask me how I'm doing and shit like that?" Like it's just, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like the world could be destroyed at any second, and they're arguing about like. Um, just bullshit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. And George C. Scott is just 
yeah, he's off off his off the rails in this movie. Uh, it's such a such a joy to watch. It's one of my favorite oh. besides Clockwork Orange, which is like my favorite movie. Period. I think it's up there. Um, this one is definitely one I could go back to and watch over and over again because it's just well, and it's ninety minutes, so it's, <laughs> it's the shortest watch. Yeah, <laughs> uh, easy to digest that way, and you just get more from it each time you watch it too. Um, watching it in the theater, by the way was pretty crazy. You could tell who hadn't seen it because when the movie ended, they were like, okay, and they got up and walked out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what to expect. They just heard it was a classic. So, yeah, um, hopefully you'll want to chit-chat about it after it ends because there's a lot of details. There's a lot of fun little details about that movie. Go. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm so happy. I'm so get happy that off you guys my list, have finally. It. Yeah, I'm very, uh, very excited to get that one off my list. How are we going to fucking rank these? <laughs> <laughs> These are all gonna, gonna be gonna be amazing movies based on what we've heard. Oh man, uh, not one of us has in here. Oh, I don't know. I heard good things about Transformers last night, so I don't know. You yeah, know, go check it out. <clears throat> you know, I got nobody. No, I don't. That fight doesn't exist. None right? of us chose a bad movie in here uh, that we've heard is a bad is, movie. He's your friend, Michael Bay, because that'd yeah, be the right. only person who would. Go, come on, guy. Just, just say it on there. <laughs> I need help, man. Come on. <laughs> come on, man. Nobody's seeing my movies. Except, yeah. except they are. No one saw the last one. <laughs> that was JD's mention, right? Kyle, do you have one? Uh, that was on my list as well. So I'm kind of at the mid mid area of my list. And the next one for me is Godfather 2. Oh. Maybe ooh. maybe like the, one of the biggest yeah. cinema omissions I've ever had would, in my life. Yeah, I would say so. In terms of uh, age and quality. like uh, Yeah. Because like, it... It's an older movie that should have. Well, and, it, and it's heralded as like the greatest sequel of all time, and yeah. I'm like, guys, Empire exists. Everybody remember that. Um, yeah. It's fine though. Don't worry about it. Um, no, and people still, you know, people still talk about this one as just being one, of the, and it's one of the greats. You know, yeah. so, like I've got to, I've got to check this one out for sure. And uh, I love everybody in this movie. I, I love mafia movies. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, like I just, I have no idea why I've never seen this movie. It makes no sense to me. This one especially uh, so, is more about. Uh, Vito's journey from when he first migrated over to America and how he came to be who he is, you know, like you see De Niro play that character. So like, there's even more of like the mafia stuff. Like how did he actually become a mafia? And then you see the parallels between his journey and Michael. Yeah. um, It's brilliant. Brilliantly told. Yes. Yeah. It makes it, even though it's like a three hour movie, like you sit down during once and you're like, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop this movie. (laughs) Like it's so good. Right. right. And I love the first movie, you know? So it's like, it's, I can't, I cannot explain to you guys why I've never seen this movie. It makes it makes zero sense to me. <laughs> uh, it makes me mad even because uh, it's just in my genre house and it's just in you know it's just it's in my wheelhouse you know. So um, uh, I'm very excited to get to it. I I have no idea really what to expect. I, I you have told me a little bit about just now about what the story is going to be about, but I have never really looked yeah. into it or anything. So I'm going into it pretty fresh, despite how classic it is and despite. I'll probably be watching it and going, oh, Family Guy did this scene, or, you know, oh, yeah, or someone. You'll pick up references everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, no, I, it was I, and he kisses him. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, that's in that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah exactly. great. <laughs> yeah. You broke my heart. You broke my you heart. Broke my yeah. heart. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that in a million movies. So. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you'll, oh, man, this will be, like, top, it, it, definitely in your top when you rank these. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's, I'm pretty sure it landed in my top five of all time. Pretty sure. Wow. Really? That's awesome. Yeah, at least top 10, but I'm pretty sure top 5. The only reason it's not it might be top 20 for me cuz it's not uh, I had top to kind of be honest though, with myself crazy. like what am I going to watch the most of and this one's just so long that I just don't revisit it that often. But that's it fair. Is unquestionably. But top 20 is crazy. That's, but that's so like high. It, it was top 10 it was, for you. That's crazy. That's insane. I think it was the first movie where I was ever like as a younger person just like man the way that they're telling the story stood out to me. Yeah. Cuz I think I watched it when I was like 12 or 13 somewhere in there for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I stole my dad's DVD set. Yeah, I still got it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> jokes on you, dad. Except you did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that yeah. third one. Don't know what happened to that one. That no, I, that's that movie's a bummer. There's some moments in it that are really, really like heartbreaking. And then that's not bad. It's just some of the acting, notably uh, Sophia Coppola's daughter, was yeah. just God. It's so bad. Thank God she quit that and did directing instead. No kidding, because she's obviously got an eye for that. Clearly. But. Ugh, it's just yeah she's terrible so basically Kyle you can continue <laughs> not seeing part three okay <laughs> you're good not seeing yeah, I'm fine yeah. with that 
Don't um, complete the circle on that one. Yeah, <laughs> part two does end in a way that you're kind of like, uh, you kind of don't go, oh, there's going to be a sequel to this. You're just kind of like, oh, this is fucked up. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, well, that's evident. They did it like 13 years yeah. after Godfather Part Two. They did want like, to okay. be older. Yeah, they did it in 1990. Yeah. That's how. Wow, that's yeah, kind that's of a new. How it's... old the, or how old Part Two? Like how much of a gap there was. Right. Right. Because uh, when I think of any movie in the 90s, I'm like, oh, that's in my lifetime. That's new. Exactly. I'm old. I need to start re- accepting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're old, guys. We're, we're up there now. Yeah, we're all old. So, yeah. uh, we could be the Pacino role in part three now. That's If how I showed are. up to like a concert, like I'm the weird old guy at the concert. Yeah. Yeah. This guy, hide your shit. There's this old guy. Yeah, next right. to us. No, he's got a mustache. <laughs> I got the cop. Yeah. Fucking narc over here. <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, guys, seriously, I'm cool. Well, like, trust me. Come on, oh. guys. You holding or what? I'm cool. <laughs> hey, you, hey, you cool kids. You guys yeah, got a exactly. doob? Hey, what's going on, cool kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great all you youngsters doing um i guess i should list because you guys are already halfway through i should probably list uh some ones that i don't know i'm just gonna go with uh go ahead and go i mean uh you guys probably don't have this one uh gone with the wind do you have that in your list anywhere no i should uh, though no i am pretty sure i've seen that before. oh really okay all yeah. four hours of it or whatever the fuck it is yeah God, yeah no, thank you to that <laughs> I think long. we watched it for God. I'm trying to. I know we watched it for school or something. So that Had means to, I remember yeah. nothing of it. Um, I think it was one of yeah, those things yeah. we started in school for me, and I don't think we ever finished it. And I don't. I don't remember a thing about it. Yeah, because teachers yeah. aren't ever sick for three weeks at a time that you would need to watch all that in yeah. 40, yeah, forty-five true. minute periods. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's it would take a month to finish it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> especially in like blocking schedules and stuff. Um, Anyway, uh, Gone with the Wind, though, it's in the AFI top 10 or 5 or whatever mm-hmm. of, like, best movies ever made, according yeah. to them, according to those scholars or whatever the fuck they are, yeah, doctors of film. Mm. And, uh, yeah, Probably, this is yeah. just, we're at the point now where I've, I'm starting to see more and more classic movies, so I'm kind of like, well, what have I not seen? And it's like, oh, my God, Gone with the Wind, that's, like, uh, apparently an iconic type of movie, uh, a classic. So what am I doing? I should probably see it, you know? This is a good opportunity to see it. It's a good time, yeah. Yeah, uh, and to be like, uh, you know, why the fuck is it so long? That's probably what I'm going to end up saying. <laughs> I don't know that anybody's recommended it to me. It's just on the AFI watch list, That's or the not the watch list, the top 100, and I'm trying to, like, power through that <laughs> this year. Uh, so there's some ulterior motives to this list, too. Okay. Uh, right. That's where I got, like, five of these titles is from that list. Um, I hope it's good, though. I just want – there's just, like <laughs> – how is a movie that long and it's good? Like, it's just – I know, like you couldn't get your story out like by cutting an hour off. Yeah, maybe an hour and a half. <laughs> At least the version that I saw that was on like li- online somewhere, totally legally, uh, it was definitely, yeah, it was like four hours because it included like a overture and shit like that. You know, like the older movies well, would always do, like right. intermission, yeah, noises, well, intermission what noises. Like- what if it's like Blade Runner whenever we hear about that like fabled like four and a half hour long version of oh Denny V that he did and we're like, yeah, I want that. What if that's this movie? You know, like what if <laughs> right. that's the equivalent or it's just like, God, oh, just keep it coming. Keep it coming. You <laughs> that's never know. True. You never know. Yeah. Um, we'll find out, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's on my list. Uh, JD, do you have one? Um, let's see. Next up for me would be The Green Mile. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Never, uh, never seen this one surprisingly because it's a Frank Darabont prison movie, Spielberg yeah. adaptation. Yeah, um, I, would, really I would say you're gonna love this movie, but it's kind of a bummer. So have fun. <laughs> yeah, with that. I think that's probably the major reason why I've stayed away from it because everybody prefaces it like it's great and you're gonna die inside. <laughs> like, yeah, I, mean, uh, I don't yeah. want to do that. A piece of you will no longer be uh, with you the moment after the credits roll in this movie. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not ready. But whatever happens, happens, and I've uh, I've wanted to go back and revisit it ever since Michael Clark right. Duncan passed away because it's one of the few of his that I've never seen. His bigger movies, anyway. Right. Yeah, this is so. his probably his best role, honestly. And this is uh, absolutely a uh, a great pick. Again, Darabont is so good with Spielberg adapt or Spielberg with Stephen King adaptation. So, uh, and in prison movies, okay. he's just good with prison movies. So, it's a great choice. And I think Kyle's about to mention another one, another one of those prison movies that he did that was a Stephen King Ooh, adaptation. What would that one be? Uh, uh, maybe I, I maybe. don't know. Well, we'll get there. Also, this is a 1999 movie, so you're thinking ahead. That's what you're doing. You're thinking ahead. I see your game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah you're right i'm just trying to get that one out of the way <laughs> totally 
A 99, though. It's definitely on that level. One of the best years in film, and that movie didn't even make my top 10. That's how good that year is. Like, mm. Because wow. King, Green Mile is fucking Jesus. amazing. And that movie, there's just no fucking room. I don't, I don't think it was on mine either, actually. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that mm. year is insane. I can't wait, because it's honestly, I argue that it's the best year for movies that we've been alive for, um, period. Like, in oh, quantity and quality. Really? I think so. Okay, I'll have to go back and check a look at that list. Yeah, it's fucking nuts how many iconic rewatchable movies there are that year. Uh, anyway, we'll get there. Ne- we'll get there next year. Hey, 2019. Blade Runner 2019. Um, All right. <laughs> Kyle, Pretty what's cool. another one you have? Uh, I had one that um, um, I may have seen before, but like, it, I definitely don't remember anything about it except for all the co- pop culture references. It's uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, yeah, I've never heard of it. So yeah, I know you guys have never heard of it. It's a very small it's role by a very small actor. Um, definitely not larger <laughs> than life or anything. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, ex- pretty excited to see Jack this movie. Nicholson, yeah, that's totally a yeah, subtle I, actor. I, I have very seen nuanced. the uh, escaping from a mental institution gag in, in almost every single version of it across like media ever, except yeah. for its original form, which is this movie. So... Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see it. Um, my, and I, uh, I just know that like at some point my dad probably had it on or something, but I was like four. You know, yeah. I don't remember it or something. Do you have so. this one, JD? Or yeah, right? it's it's on my list because um, it's it's, it's one of those kind of like you just said, Kyle, where like it's been on because my parents used to watch this movie when I was growing up, but never actually sat down and watched it. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Um, I don't. And I like think, Milos uh, Foreman, so. I'm, oh yeah, I'm Milos excited Foreman for this is one. the sh- the shit when it comes to the these shiznit. Movies. Uh, yeah. these type of like Oscar worthy movies, basically, uh, the, this movie, it's not in my like top 40 just because there's, it's fucking, it's depressing. I'm going to be honest. Um, but oh, it is one yeah. of like my favorite movies like ever made. Like it's easy to get through oh. in terms of like the pacing of it. It's just so well paced and plotted out that you're, you're just glued to it the entire time. And, uh, then it has the, one of the biggest bummer endings ever. And I know Kyle, you're a big fan of those. So. It's gonna yeah, I like man. those, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, they kill me a little bit, so that's fine too. This one, uh, this one was in the AFI Top 100 as well, um, but it also <laughs> was one of the only or the second movies to win all five, uh, all five like main awards at the Oscars, which is Best Picture, Best Actor, mm. Actress, Director, and Screenplay. Um, wow, which at that time was like all the all of them. They didn't have supporting. I don't think back then. I don't know. Uh, that's anyway, crazy. Um, yeah, like uh, the how many movies won. have you ever done that? I think Sounds of the Lambs did it too. Oh, okay. And, uh, Makes sense. That movie's yes. okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I guess they just don't count supporting in the same role. Whatever. I think it happened. What one? It happened one night was one of them, and Sounds of the Lambs. No other. So it's just three movies that have done that, and that's those three. Man. I've never seen it happen one night though. Talk about one that should be in my list for maybe next year. I don't know. Uh, hmm. It's a great movie though. And uh, it's very much earned. Nicholson earns the Oscar. The actress who plays the nurse, who I mentioned in our villains episode, she's oh, so yeah, fucking yeah. good. She's so good. Uh, uh, she's so good in that role. That's such a complex, like, just fucking crazy character. Um, crazy, subdued, and evil character. <laughs> it's, yeah. She betrays you with her niceness and her passive-aggressive tones. It's, yeah. it's a great role. Anyway, I'm excited for you guys to see it, man. Dude, Just... young Christopher Lloyd, man. Yeah, like and younger. Danny DeVito, anyway. Oh wow. Yeah. Marty. <laughs> Marty, your kids. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tune Town. Okay, sorry. So my oh, God. next Is that a Roger one... Ra- Roger Rabbit drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my next one. A freeway. <laughs> it sounds like I'll be uh, completing mine after you guys already finish your list. Uh, but my next one is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. Ooh, oh. I, have that on, I have that on mine too, man. Oh, fuck yes. I'm... Oh, man. What? Yeah, no, I've seen that one. Yeah, clearly, okay. I'm just, I'm trying all those westerns like bleed together for me. You're, yeah, you're gonna like that movie. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's yeah, the one that's a great. Uh, My dad was wah, a great. Wah, wah, wah. She, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's a huge western fan. Like the just the biggest like western movie. So I grew up watching those movies all of my life. You know. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, this, this is yeah, this is a classic. So yeah. yeah. I've, I've, Glad you're getting around to that one. And it's Sergio Leone, and that dude is a was a fucking beast in this genre. Uh, mm-hmm. I've seen uh, Fistful of Dollars. That's the first one, right, with this character? Yeah. And yeah. I haven't seen for a few dollars more. Maybe I should because there's a character in that that's in this one. Um. Anyway, this one is iconic as shit, and my it's one of my dad's favorite movies, like ever. Period. 
Same box um, with mine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, it's like kind of like I feel like I owe it to somebody to help birth me so I can see it and talk about it with him. <laughs> and Sergio Leone also did... Hey, uh, watch this movie before we talk about this just so I can talk about it more because it's been years since I've seen it, so... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll bring... Yeah, we'll bring that fresh perspective. Fresh perspective. Mm. And fresh perspective. He yeah, also, like this that. director also did Once Upon a Time in the West, which is a fucking great movie. Oh, cool! That one may or may not be uh, next. On oh, nice! List. Getting, Going for a Western theme on this two, one, dude. Not two directors, <laughs> two movies, the same director. That's awesome. Uh, but that's a really great movie. Like he's so good at those epics, those long, epic westerns uh, of a certain feel and tone. Uh, I'm excited to see it, man. And that score is. It's just one of the best ever made. <laughs> it's uh-huh. just Ennio Morricone, Morricone just fucking slaying um, behind the conductor stick. I don't know what the fuck they call those. Anyway. Uh, comp- the wand. <laughs> the wand they wave around casting spells. I don't spells. know if they say that. Yeah. Violent Neolis <laughs> yeah, right. or whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, that's one of mine, and, and it sounds like it's one of JD's too. Um, yeah. I should probably list another one. Okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm trying to keep up right. with you guys. Uh, yeah, go, since go, we go. have a lot of Yeah, I'm on number six for perspective. So yeah, I'm on. This is my fifth one. I'm about to list. It's uh, Lawrence okay. of Arabia. Does anybody have that one? I don't. Uh, that just that just didn't make my list. Okay, gotcha. so that'll be, on, be like, on next year's. Yeah. That'll be on next. Yeah, oh, okay. unless it sucks. Yeah, unless if I tell you, yeah, yeah, I would movie. wait. <laughs> but this is another. All my movies are fucking long. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is another one that's kind of longer, but. Uh, I watched the Spielberg documentary on HBO and he talks about how this movie like kind of defined who he wanted to be as a director. And oh, whoa. I mean, so many people have talked about how great this movie is and how it's just one of the best movies ever made. They mention it in Uncharted three. One of the characters mentions, uh, uh, Drake mentions, uh, Lawrence of Arabia. And, uh, one of the characters who's like the, uh, he's like an English dude, the bald guy. Yeah, Jason Statham, he's like yeah. great film or whatever. Yeah. He's Jason Statham character. <laughs> Jason basically. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's like great film or whatever. It's just, it's so embedded in the pop culture of people that like yeah. are cinephiles that it's kind of, I'm kind of kicking myself for not seeing it yet. <clears throat> JD, were you trying to say something? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. I think you like no. cut in and out for like a second, just going mm, or something. I heard a, uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard like an alien come in for a second. <laughs> 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 Take me to your leader. It's like, <laughs> We like movies. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we should do an episode that's like top 10 movies you would show aliens if they came to Earth and didn't oh, know anything about our culture. Oh, man. I, I would have no idea how to fucking complete that list. Why would how you? How would we do that? Like, you don't pick want to show all, them something pick good. all sci-fi and just be like, is this right? Is okay. this right? Is yeah, this right? right? They're like, oh. no, and is they this kill right? all of us because we're so wrong. <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, uh, uh, what is it? Mom and dad save Mars or whatever. That one's right. And you're like, fucking shit. I would whatever. show them 50 Shades or of Grey. Or worse, it's Starship Troopers. That's the one that's right. It's like, oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll show them 50 Shades of Grey and be like, yes, people liked this shit. <laughs> and be like, Take me away from leave. people. We're obviously Dude, more yeah, like they, each other. <laughs> that would turn a non-hostile like interaction into, they'd just be like, all right, fuck yeah. y'all. You're done. <laughs> Laser beam done. Absolutely. Uh, so that was, uh, yeah, I'm like halfway through my list now. Uh, I know, JD, you've got like two left, though. Yeah, I don't have very many left. <laughs> yeah, we'll skip you and go to well, it's Kyle. What's, what's another one of yours? Uh, mine is uh, Raging Bull. That's my Ooh, next one. Nice, but, hey, dude. Hey, we're covering. Yeah, I got one that I got that one on mine too. Oh, get out of here! Cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, we're synchronizing a, way more than I thought we would be. Yeah. Uh, just two or threes. Um, anyways, uh, I'm uh, very excited for uh, to see this movie. Uh, this is a movie that I. No, another another one because my dad was a boxer. Um, you know, like he he's not pro or anything like that, but he he boxed in um, the amateur league uh, all nice. through his twenties, and um, he just I was into that stuff. You know, so I know this is another movie that was on in the background at some point, but I've never actually sat down and watched it. Uh, I couldn't even tell you a single scene. You know, um, so I'm very excited to get to it. Robert De Niro. Um, I've always heard great things about it, so uh, we'll see if Talk it delivers. The boxer. Is that is that this movie? Does he do that? He doesn't say. The I'm boxer, a boxer. Are you talking to me? Boxer, you you're gonna, you're gonna box me, Greg? I'm gonna punch you. Punch you, Greg. Dude, he you can hear me doing the face. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, like screaming at me right now. <laughs> he he's awesome in that movie, man. I watched it for the first time last summer. Yeah. Uh, just because oh, wow. we were talk- Jeff and I were talking about Scorsese, and I was like, "Yeah, this one's on. Fuck it, I'll record it." Really, really solid, man. It's got a weird. Because uh, he gets the shit beat out of him. I don't know if you know that. 
like that even within respect that of yeah that dude yeah, yeah even within the respect of boxing like he's known for just not giving up basically and just taking the punishment so the Stallone um, movie this is the movie that he's that they're like that he's like kind of re-portraying or whatever this still like him possibly. and Stallone where they like old man box or whatever like Stallone's kind of reprising like the Rocky role and this is yeah. kind of the role that he's reprising like these are the big boxing movies that they come from yep man that's kind of cool. De Niro gets the fucking shit kicked out of him, and he's got a weird little prosthetic nose at the end that doesn't look right, but everything else about the movie is fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, this is my one Scorsese movie on the list, and I'm really excited to fucking see this one. This is an also another one that's on the AFI Top 100. I can't remember where, but it's up there, so I'm kind of filling cool. that void. Yeah, too. It, was, it was at the top of a lot of um, Top 100 lists, so yeah, yeah it's kind of weird it up on there. Uh, De Niro... Yeah, it's it sounds like it's like a career best performance from him, um, which is kind of saying something, I guess, because he's got a great career or whatever. I heard he had a good one. Yeah, I've heard heard. He a pretty good one. <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm. I think uh, I've heard that. Yeah, the fighting is um, kind of similar to Rocky, where the the boxing is uh, as real as possible, but not mm-hmm. too real. You know. Um, yeah. Kind of like there's a clip out there you can see Michael B. Jordan getting his uh, ass knocked out from Creed. Oh yeah, I saw it. It was on Hot Ones. Yeah, it was. It was on Hot Ones, and but that boxer that was, was a great episode him, by the like, way. Forty percent good, good looking out on. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it's a great episode. Everybody needs to watch that show, Hot Ones. It's fucking good. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think Raging Bull has some of the same technique in regards to how it shoots the boxing stuff. Cool. I don't know. I'm interested to see it, and it's another again. It's another long one for me, so I'll be, be buckled up and got my pee bucket. Um, I'll be watching a lot of old, uh, older, longer movies. That's for sure. Um, which one was that? That was Kyle's. Okay, yeah. So uh, I'm next, and I'll go. Uh, this is another one. This another one's fucking long. It's Metropolis. And this, oh, one, this is another one I wanted to see, but it didn't quite make my list. It's uh, old as dicks. This is probably the oldest one on here. It's like from the twenties or some shit, some shit like that. It's definitely a, it's a silent this. movie. Um, but uh, according to you know many people that I've talked to, particularly my friend at work who's a big time uh, cinephile, uh, the version it's on been on Netflix for ages. The version that's on there is like the one you watched. It's like the version you watch, and it's a sci- it's like one of the original sci fi movies like ever. Um, it's how long is it? 153 minutes. Great. Whoa. Buckle up. Wow. Buckle the fuck up. Uh, I'm no talking. <laughs> shit. <Well. laughs> Apparently it was when it came out, critics were mixed on it because of course they are. You know, when it comes to ambitious sci-fi, they're just kind of like, what the fuck is this? You know? Uh, and yeah, it's just one of those type of uh, existential dystopian movies. One of the first ones to ever really do it and do it really, really well. Up, So I'm reading and I'm excited to see it. I want to see some weird shit. And cool. that's what I'm expecting. It, uh, I watched the first like, <clears throat> five seconds of Not five seconds. It was like five minutes uh, many years ago. And I was like, I'm not in the mood to read right now. So I just watched something else. <laughs> but, oh, so there's like subtitles? Um, yeah, there's, yeah, it's a silent movie. So it's kind of like something happens and then the words on my screen and shit like that. Yeah, right, it's its own frame or whatever. Right, that, yeah, it, exactly. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's one of the ones with the longest lasting legacy. That's for sure. So... Whatever. I'm going to watch it on Netflix and probably hate on it because it's too silent. <laughs> Get to the point. Oh, God. Just say something already. Uh, so, what, JD still has two. I have four. Kyle has three. I'll just list one more. Uh, you guys have seen this one, I think. I think both of you have seen this one. My Cousin Vinny. Yeah, oh, dude. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Seriously. <laughs> you got mud in your tires or something? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Hey, you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm, uh, I'm cousin. Hey, I'm, I'm uh, Joe Pesci. Look, uh, you told me to do a thing, and I did the thing, and now I'm here in front of you. I don't know what the line is, but, <laughs> dude, Fred Gwynn as the judge is one of the greatest things yeah. I've ever seen, because it went from Herman Munster to that character as a child, and oh my god, you're gonna love it, man. Like, yeah, there are certain parts, certain parts of it are super dated, but, uh, oh, overall... Tomei, man. Yeah. Or also, yeah. yeah Marissa Just Tomei. Priority Tomei right there. Come on. Banging in this movie. If I'm I mainly watching I mean, it because you guys have, especially JD, that's like one of your favorites. Uh, just recommended yeah. the shit out of it for so long that I'm just kind of like, all right, it's time to, you know, it's Fucking time to watch it. <laughs> there we go. The the dead is owed. Uh, what what uh did it get like? I think she won an Oscar for it. I she won it. Best Actress for it. Oh wow, yeah. get out of Supporting here. Supporting yeah. actress. That's what she won. Yep. Even though she's when like, she starts the talking lead, about cars. Okay. I don't even give a shit about cars, but it makes yeah, sense. no, pause the track and just yeah, yeah just mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's uh, now I have three left. And uh, Kyle, let's uh, you can go ahead and list one. Um, it's uh the this is the number one movie. If I, ne I after I see this movie, I'm gonna be so happy to never have to hear you've never seen Shawshank Redemption or Shank Shaw Redemption. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Shank um, Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm very excited to get this to get this movie just out of my hair. Um, and it sounds like I'm just like oh, I'm, I'm so over it. I just I'm already over it. I'm not. Uh, we went to the penitentiary that this movie was shot at yep. in some scenes. You fucking went there, uh, yeah. I, I know, I, I have intimate knowledge of, of, of this movie, and I've never You're seen You're the only movie. person in the world that's been there and had no idea I what know, they were fucking yeah, doing there. That, you saw all the costumes ghost, and everybody. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, I'm really excited to see this movie. I, I, I know everybody who's in it. <laughs> I know everybody who's done it. Uh, you know, I just, I know all the scenes already. I may have already seen this movie, I guess that you could say, just because of how much has been replicated and everything. Uh, none of it will be unfamiliar to me, I imagine, but uh, it's just going to be really nice to um, finally see it and, you know, get it get it out there, get it rated, and uh, see how I think, you know, see how I feel about it and everything. Uh, I just hope it's not one of those uh, cases of just, like, yeah, everyone's talked about it my entire life, so it's just yeah. All right, I saw it now. You have no, me? it's it's <laughs> no, it's not. It's as good as everybody so, says I it hope, is. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope it's exactly the case where it's as good as everyone for the last thirty-two years of my life. Uh, you know, even though it came out, you know, not in nineteen eighty-six, but whatever. Ninety-three, um, ninety-four, yeah, something whatever. Like that. Yeah, yeah, ninety-three. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I, I feel like I've just heard about this movie ever since I was a kid. I've never gotten around to it. So God, you're talk about that's so being owed. You are going to, you know what? I might just, I've already watched it this year again. Probably just going to watch it again because you're watching it. Yeah, oh, okay. honestly. Me too. You know what? Fuck it. It's on Netflix. It's Fuck it. It's been a long time. <laughs> Fuck it. It's such a good movie. I really don't give yeah, a I'm shit. I'm excited. I'm going to like, I've been sitting here a lot going, oh, I can watch some of these movies. I go, nope. We said we wouldn't start until we did this episode. So. Yeah, exactly. Let me know when you watch it. I'll watch it at the same time so we can be like sync season shit. I'm probably going to watch it this weekend. So Sweet. All right, let It'll me know. Sink Shank Redemption. Sink Shank Redemption. Sink Shank Redemption. Sink Shank Redemption. The Shaw Redemption. All right. Uh, <laughs> the Shaw Shank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for you to see it. Oh, man. And that's where all the Morgan Freeman narration like really kind of originated. By sure. and by. By and by. Uh, did Annie Dufresne didn't say any words to me. <laughs> I guess I just wanted my friend. Her I friend think back. he just wanted to feel alive again. All right. <laughs> um, there's so many great scenes, like iconic scenes in that movie. Holy shit. Uh, and you'll be like, oh, I've been there. You know, there's going to be so many moments where you like, you recognize certain scenes and stuff, uh, oh, certain sure. areas. Oh yeah, like in the actual yeah, that's gonna yeah. that's gonna be my favorite part. When the bus oh is pulling God. in with all the new prisoners, including Tim Robbins, like you'll be uh -huh. like, we've we've been there, and you'll see that they like kind of broke down because there were only two cell blocks right when we went, and uh, that's mm -hmm. probably how it's gonna remain. Um, it, the prison used to be much larger, and they tore it down like after they shot the movie. I, I don't know how later after they shot the movie they short tore it down, but you could see that there were other areas that used to be up. Uh, cool. Which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it's a really great movie, man. Everybody's totally dead on about how good it is. <laughs> Everybody is. Well, yeah, there's we'll not going to be any like, uh, are we sure it's that good? Yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, so I have uh, two left now. So we're all in the same yeah. fucking boat. Cool. Um, so my... One, one, my uh, I originally had in here... <laughs> I don't know what that was. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I originally had like Casino and Sideways in here when I showed you guys my list the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to kind of cut back on, you know, more than a, a Dude, movie you from the casino? same director or you whatever. Casino? Do not do that. <sighs> yeah, I cut Casino. Deal with it. Oh I, my you know God. What I'm Are you instead? kidding me? Yeah, I'm serious. Because you know okay. what I'm going to see instead? I'm going to see Seven Samurai. I've never seen an Akira oh. Kurosawa movie. Oh, no, I totally... That's fine. Yeah. That's good. good for you. <laughs> yeah. Good job. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. So. Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've never uh, seen a Kurosawa uh, Another like four-hour epic that you're making upon yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Two I or seven like minutes. I yeah. I forget what it is. Yeah, it's long. But uh, it's this is another one where, like, I watch these, uh, these, these cin is it Cinefix or whatever? These guys that do top ten lists of best movies of a given genre or whatever. 
and uh, they 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 cite uh, Kurosawa's work a ton, and I'm like, I've never seen a single one of these movies, like never. Oh, you've seen this movie a million times already. The, oh, we got to get a band of people together and yeah. send off the bandits, and like so. I mean, Seven that's not going to be new to you, this, but like yeah. just remember that this originated that you know, like this created all that. Yeah, this started that formula for sure. Uh, so I'm really pumped to see it. And uh, Sideways, I also took out because uh, th- there's another movie that. We saw a movie very recently in the theaters that uh, kind of made me change my list up, and uh, we'll get to that. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, Seven Samurai. I am really fucking hyped to see this movie. So uh, JD, what's uh, what's uh, your second? I guess second to last one or whatever. Well, I guess I mean uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Actually, Ooh. I didn't really talk about it that much, but yeah, I put that one on there as well just to get that uh, fucking western slow burn or uh, sorry neo western movie that we've been experiencing lately kick of all these neo western movies i need to go back and see where this fucking came from a little bit yeah so i didn't mind putting two on my list for that reason so yeah that's uh that's very different from what we see now but the once upon yeah, a time in the west part like uh the hostiles is probably the closest you see to what sergio leone was doing with westerns and that's fine because uh, i think you know, i love that movie like a lot yeah, fucking uh, love it too. I'm, that's my still my biggest omission of the year, even over Molly's game, and like I like cowboy movies, so that's like yeah. you know Dude. that's more important to me than seeing a movie about a guy making a dress, even though I know that's probably the one <laughs> issue. Hey, hey, he makes like 50, 50 dresses, okay? Yeah. Uh, we well, you know what, man? That's pretty impressive. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Daniel Day Lewis in real life because he totally did, and he didn't even. Yeah, no, he that. really, he really. I don't know if he really made fifty, but I know he made a dress. Yeah, he made really like. Did. A few, like he went and made dresses for like a while, and oh, um, wow. and, oh that doesn't surprise me at all. Why am I saying, yeah, oh, no, wow, like, that's some like, weird thing? Yeah, he's fucking as full method. method as any method actor has ever yeah. been. And it's kind of insane because you don't, he didn't need to do that for the character. Like when we watch the movie, no. you're not like, oh, he surely made some dresses to him. Wow, that's well, so I think he really wanted to maybe know what the struggle was so yes. that he could appreciate yeah, making no, exactly the perfect dress, like, you know, like he, he it's more the emotive process, you know, fucking brilliant guy. Why do we? Why does he ever retire? Fucking, what a loser. What a fucking Come, self-centered piece of shit. Come back. Uh, anyway, I'm you glad you're seeing... And you're just keeping it. <laughs> I'm glad you're seeing What's Fine in Time in the West. It's really great, and it's got an awesome, like, fucking awesome payoff. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's really fantastic, though. Mm. The opening the opening really sets the tone of where the entire movie's gonna go in terms of, like, the pacing and stuff like that. There's a lot of staring back and forth and shootouts that are, you know slow burn shootouts and they're, they're great it's really I it's a it. tense movie it's great and the score is yeah it'll blow you the fuck away dude it's good sweet uh, kyle what, what's what you got next uh i wanted to keep a, a lot of uh, at least a good amount of happy and sad movies on my list so uh i i had to choose a really happy movie uh schindler's list yeah uh here's just a really <laughs> a lot of jolly in that movie it is. A lot of yucks, yeah. A lot of um, just yeah. a lot of giggles. So I, you know, I had to make sure my my, my list was. Ri- That's a happy movie, right? I'm not off base. Is that a- <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, Liam Neeson cool. at his funniest. All Liam right, Mason's? cool guy. Yeah. You know, this is the beginning of his uh, comedy career. This is why he wanted to do um, that really bad Seth what uh, Seth um, McFarlane Western movie later yeah. because this is where his comedy chops began. Oh, I was talking about that movie's amazing. I'm just kidding. Um, a million ways no, to suck in the West. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's another one that my buddy was watching at work, and I was just like, "Yeah, this is not good." <laughs> <laughs> but I missed this one. Um, anyways, uh, Schindler's List. Yeah, I'm excited to get to this one. As is any as excited as anyone can be to get to a movie about the Holocaust. So, right. no. <laughs> that's about yeah. That's about where you should be at with it because it is. It, I view it as. It, it kind of feels like a crime against humanity if you don't rank it like number one uh, for Spielberg's movies. Yeah. Um, as far as Spielberg movies go, but at the same time, you're not going to watch it over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, why would you have a need to? But there's so many this filmmaking. Is really his best. I think so. Um, wow. But there's so much filmmaking stuff, like in terms of like the techniques that he, he the way he plays with light in the movie too, especially, uh, which I saw a lot more of in his documentary from last year, um, and how personal of a movie it is to him, how it, how it kind of helps him come to terms with his own uh, Judaism because he's never yeah. confronted it like ever in his life like un- up until he made this movie um, oh, wow. and there's a scene at the end too with a bunch of people and you'll see it, it there's a scene at the end too that's just like I think I'm I think I'm gonna cry or kill myself I'm not sure what yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking <laughs> sad hey, <laughs> so totally, totally sad. natural reactions yeah. <laughs> seriously uh, doesn't sound funny at all so thank you awesome 
<laughs> it's so good though. And Ray Fiennes is like the lead, not uh, lead, whatever you want to call it. I can't remember his character's name, uh, but I'm pretty sure we brought him up in the villains discussion. Oh yeah. Um, hold on. But yeah, anyway, he's like the main Nazi that you kind of follow around, and he does some pretty heinous shit. Mm-hmm. Um, that Family Guy does a bit where you first see him um, <clears throat> show up in the movie, and it's really fucked up. Like, it's <laughs> it's like shot for shot what happens in Schindler's List, and, and Peter's doing it out of his window. Oh, my God. I'll have to send it. I'll have to send you the exact uh, reference to it after you see nice. Schindler's List. You'll be like, that's so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Family funny, guy, like man. funny, fucked up. Um, right. Anyway, that's a great movie. It's gonna, it's gonna stick with you, man. And I remember seeing that as a kid when they aired it on TV, like uncensored. And uh, at that point, I was just watching it, going, "Why is it a big deal that it's uncensored?" And it, yeah, it's violent, and there's titties at one point. So I was kind of yeah, like, boobies. a lot of, a lot of dicks too, though. Yeah. I, that was dickies. my thing. I'm like, why are all these dicks on ABC? <laughs> <laughs> but they're like okay. not. Appetite, ap- appetizing, <laughs> appetizing. No, they're no, not. not non-appetizing dicks. <laughs> it's so terrible. Uh, it's not. It's not sexual. It's, it's very, very. Yeah, it's the no, Jewish the people in the camps. The camps. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. And it's yeah, it's a horrifying, some horrifying yeah, shit. Yeah. I'm very excited to see all these horrifying things. So mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah. At least Shawshank has like lighthearted moments and stuff. Uh, that's for sure. Like, there's a lot of great character stuff going on there. Um, and it's got a great ending too. Um, but some of these other ones, bummer fucking endings. Dr. Strangelove two is a great laugh. Everything. Yeah. Pretty much Dr. Strangelove is like the only comedy or lighthearted thing I have on this list. So yeah, I wish Uh, I had any, I I think my cousin Vinny might be a comedy. Uh, it is. Uh, Yeah. You know, you're going to laugh maybe. I don't know. Cool. Hey, you don't. Hey, uh, (laughs) Oh, I'm next. I'm last, uh, on my last one. That is. Um, so recently we saw Annihilation. Everybody go check out our review uh, episode of that. And uh, the biggest comparison that people were drawing was to a, um, a was it Russian movie, a Russian movie from 1979 called Stalker, because uh, apparently it has a very similar type of premise where there is this zone that you visit that's very alien and it breaks the laws of fi- things happen there that break the laws like of physics and stuff, and it's like heavily guarded. But people can actually visit it and stuff, and it, the zone itself appears to be like sentient and have its own thing going on. And it just sounds like a sci-fi movie that's right up my fucking alley. And this is yeah. by a director that I've never seen. And again, this is like a YouTube channel references this guy all the time. All the time, Andre Tarkovsky. Never seen any of his movies. He's referenced. Yeah, I, I all the know time. The, the name. You yeah, know. <laughs> he's referenced all the time in a lot of these, uh, a lot of these YouTube channels that I watch top ten movies of or whatever. Um, he did Solaris too. That's a the original. Oh, one. that's that's what I know. Solaris. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I've never, never seen, seen the original. Never seen it, but yeah. I know I know of it. Yeah. yeah. Same here. I know of it because they did a a remake that was like, nah. You know, yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Clooney yeah. was that's in that. That's not one. the thing I remember. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, <laughs> yeah. So that's the main reason I wanted another brainy sci-fi in here, and that's the main reason I like excluded uh, Sideways. And I chose to narrow. You chose a you chose a, a, a brainy sci-fi over a movie about some dude drinking wine. <laughs> it's more I'm about right this now. journey of the characters, Kyle, or whatever no, the fuck. Not. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll eventually see Sideways. I'm sure. Uh, but, Sideways uh, is yeah. JD. What's your last one? What's your final one? My final one is um, let's see. What what I want to do with this is every year do a James Dean movie because I've never seen any of them. Me neither. Um, so I'm going to put Rebel Without a Cause on this one and then just cool. do the rest on, on my next few lists. So that's, that's a good one to add because that's the one that's most referenced. Even in yeah. one of our favorite movies ever made, it's, in, yeah. it's fucking all over that movie. You know? You're know, you tearing me apart! Yeah. Uh, well, I was talking about La La Land, but that too. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but that movie okay. too. Uh, yeah, two movies. Yeah, two movies that we've very recently seen and fallen in love with for different reasons. Uh, <laughs> Way different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have Rebel Without a Cause references in them. And uh, yeah, that's a good one. And I did have that in my list for a while, honestly. Uh, whatever. We'll, we'll do this more. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's great when there's a part in uh, La La Land where he quotes it and she is, she's like, yes. Yes. And he just, he just recognizes that reaction as like a... 
you've never seen it, but you're pretending you've seen it reaction. And he's like, you've never seen it. And I'm in the audience going, nope, me neither. <laughs> and it's and it sucks. And she's still never seen it. Uh, she's, she like showed well, up like halfway through they were going, the film broke. Yeah, they were going to go see it. Yeah. yeah. Rude. <laughs> Oh man, you think she? You think they like follow through on that in the movie and like add a scene where she fucking watches it or whatever, and then uh, wish it like when he's on tour and wishes that he would come back to her because she's watching it or whatever. Oh, uh, that God. would probably be too on the nose, that, though. No, that would have been that would have been perfect. It would have been. I yeah. got the blitz. Yeah. All right, fuck that. Fuck that movie now. Without fuck that, that movie, scene. you know what? It's a piece of shit. More like <laughs> yeah. lackluster land because it's fucking. Terrible. More like yon yon land. <laughs> yon yon. More like dumb dumb land because it's fucking dumb. La 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 bland. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Whatever. More like shit shit poop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Great. Hit the hard yeah, peas. Pop, pop my peas over here. I gotta get. Pop. I gotta get pop filter. That's what I gotta do. Hey, Georgie. Oh, I didn't even get that reference for a second. It, it, but yeah, I was like, where are you going? What did the pops have to do with fucking it? Uh, but whatever. <laughs> now I get it. We're good. Uh, yeah, Kyle, what's your what's your last one? He's a driver. It's a taxi. It's called Taxi Driver. <laughs> <laughs> it is about a man's relationship with his taxi. That's exactly what that is. Another comedy, right? I think. I think it's a comedy. Yeah, but it's um, hilarious. You, uh, you talking to me? Talking to huh? me? Uh, yeah, man, this is another one where I know I'm going to be watching this movie and going, cool, I've seen this movie, uh, portrayed through so many other movies or, or yes, things or absolutely. sketches or whatever. Uh, it's just another huge omission for me. And Scorsese, right? So oh, yeah. Yeah. Big, 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 big omission. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of his, um, catalog. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to get a couple of these, uh, Scorses off my list. Scorses, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you say his name. Scorses. How you say it plural. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Scorses I. Um, Scorses I. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I, you, you guys both seen it? I know, Jeff, you probably have. Yep. Jada, you've seen yes, it? I've yes, seen I it. have. Yeah. My am for a treat or... Um, Entertaining oh, yeah. as shit. You want to see De Niro go off the deep end? Yeah. Yeah. Dial it up to 11? Mm-hmm. Yep. Watch, yeah. uh, watch Raging Bull before you watch Taxi Driver, though. Because okay. it's two totally different like totally different intensities. Are by yeah. 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 Raging Wolf first and the Taxi Driver. Okay. For sure. Yeah. And if you want to see him go even further in the deep end after that, uh, you should uh, eventually add, like, King of Comedy to. Uh, that's another Scorsese movie. Uh, and it's uh, him obsessing with a talk show host, and he wants to be on as a stand up comic. Mm-hmm. And he kidnaps the talk show host to try and get on his show. And he's just batshit insane, like, delusional, thinks he's hilarious. Well, he actually kind of is. Uh, that's <laughs> the thing with the movie. He's actually kind of funny. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Highly recommend that one too, just like for different De Niro performances, you know. Cool. Um, it's just crazy to see how that much was, that was his boy had. for a while. Yeah, Man, they were boys. Yeah. Now Scorsese's he's latched on to like, uh, you know, I guess the cat. Well, no, nope. De Niro's still doing the. Uh, he's in the fucking new one, right? The Irishman. Irishman. Yeah. yeah. Irishman. And yeah. Pesci's coming out of retirement for that one too. Yeah. Um. So I, is Pacino in that one too? I think it's like a reunion yeah, of sorts. Yeah, he is. For, yeah, now he is for Godfather slash Heat. So that's cool. Um. Yeah, man, these are some good fucking movies that we're all about to see. I don't know yeah, wow. how we're going to... We're in for a treat. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to like end up ranking these, but that's what we're going to do, everybody. We're going to come back... We're going to come back, like, and if we're going to reconvene in a few months. Uh, right now, I have it scheduled for, like, m- like May or some shit like that, but we'll probably push it out um, just so we can make sure we all finish these and mm-hmm. uh, really get time to soak it in and shit. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to come back in a few months after we've seen all these, and we're each going to rank our own lists, and it'll be... Uh, It'll be fucking interesting, man. It's going to be really interesting, especially because all these are purported to be amazing fucking classics. So, yeah, it's yeah. going to be good. It's going to be fun. Uh, so that's all we got for uh, this episode. So, uh, you guys, uh, find us on Facebook and, and iTunes and not Amazon because we're not there. And, uh, <laughs> okay. and YouTube, leave us comments on, on any of those areas. You can find me on Twitter at Jeff Witty, W-I-D-D-Y. On Letterboxd, you can find us there. Look for our... Um, if you missed our cookies episode, you can go there and look for the nominations and stuff and find the episode link and stuff. Uh, we keep up, we kept up with that page. It's at EOC pod on letterbox.com. And, uh, yeah, Kyle, you, 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 you got some shit going on. Uh, yeah, I, uh, am writing reviews and doing streams. I just finished up a Dice Warriors 9 review. Uh, mm. it was not nice. 
Oh, uh, and ooh. I didn't get a review code for that, so I was extra mean. So, <laughs> <laughs> not because I didn't get a review code, but because uh, I wasn't constrained to. Yeah, you weren't you obligated know. to be like, I should probably say nice. Things. Yeah, yeah, right. I didn't have to keep a relationship with a company that I don't have one with. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that that's been fun. Um, and uh, yeah, you can check that out hopefully at the at the same week that you're listening to this podcast. So. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, because mm. you guys you guys are listening to this in the future, so we don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. The world could be over. Yeah. I don't know. We could all be like not the shimmer here. could have taken us, but that's you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Whatever happens, happens, and happened couldn't have happened any other way, as uh, Morpheus said in an elevator in a movie that nobody likes for some reason. All right. Um, except for us, we all love Reloaded. Uh, but uh, JD. Uh, yeah. How are you? What's up? <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm a little drunk. Oh okay. Yeah. I wish I've bothered to keep up with that fucking goddamn drunkenness. Um, God yeah. damn it. I really wanted to drink, and I forgot because we were talking. Forgot the wine? No, no, I have the wine. I just spent. Oh, you forgot to me. drink the wine? Yeah. God, it's been sitting okay. next to me, simmering. Uh, I don't know what shimmering? that means. Uh, it's been shimmering behind the shimmer. Anyway, wow. so uh, stay tuned for more shit. Up next, we're gonna do a, a bracket, uh, a television bracket, which we like rarely do because it's hard to do those. Um, but we're going to do one on uh, crime dramas, which there's a ton of. And we're not talking about, like, the bullshit procedurals. <laughs> we're talking about, like, good crime shows. Like um, The Wire. Oh, TV. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Hello. Man. Hello. Why am I just now realizing that we're doing this? Because I know yeah, we've talked you know about what? it before. <laughs> I know we've talked about it, too, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing next. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was like, in yeah, on that. I 1,000% don't have that list anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, thanks, guys. Also, thanks after that, we're just going to do just a top 10 for music, as we always do for music stuff, because uh, it's incredibly hard to, like, fucking argue about it. Uh, but top 10 classic rock songs, which will be really, really fun and really, really challenging because you got to pick, like, one song per band. Um, but, uh, you know, at least it creates some diversity. Uh, where is the cutoff? What do you mean? Like, years-wise? Year, yeah. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't define anything in the 80s as classic rock because uh, that's, like, hair rock shit. Because now when, like, let, like, let me just show you as an example. Like, when I'm in the car with my niece mm -hmm. and, my, and my nephew and we're listening to their radio stations, they're like, listen to some classic rock from the 90s, you know, and I'm like, no. Nah. No, like no, classic rock is like just alternative. It's what our generation defined as classic rock when we, when we yeah, were so listening to music. We're, in like the 90s. we're in agreement. It's like seventy nine and four. Like, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, but yeah, okay. but like, okay, cool, cool. Let's just say hypothetically, Pink Floyd released an album in the eighties that was better than anything they did in the seventies. Spoiler: They didn't. But if they had, <laughs> I'd still consider yeah. that classic rock. Yeah, because they're of that era. They were, uh, they were a band of the classic rock era. Correct. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, I follow. I, I am in agreement with these parameters. It's mostly like 60s one. and 70s. Yeah. In yeah, my opinion, yeah. that's where it comes from. I agree. I, that's kind of my, that's my wheelhouse, bud. Perfect. Uh, if anybody puts that. a poison a poison song, pop my peas, uh, if anybody puts a poison <laughs> song in there, then there you go. Uh, that's not uh, correct. We'll kick you off the show. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, like Guns N' Roses. Come on. It's not cla that's not the classic rock we're talking about. No, uh, no, 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 no. That's no. No, no, no. No hair metal from the 80s, guys. I will kill you. <laughs> exactly. uh, we're just not going to do that. That's a different okay? topic, though. Like, we could do that at some point, but that's just a totally different. That's not what we're talking it really about. Is. Yeah. No. It's, yeah. And it's, then we'll let's just. Show, let's show that we're serious first. Are you really <laughs> a serious musician, Jeff? You say you were a serious musician? No, I do poop songs. I do songs about poop. poop, poop. Yeah, if you guys don't have Jimi Hendrix on your list, I'm, I will quit the show. So who's yeah. what's who's that? Who's that? Okay, I'm literally quitting the show right now. I'm signing <laughs> off. <laughs> I think I you think uh, John Mayer Jack? did a Hendrix song once. That's all I know. Oh so, uh, my god! Johnny? All right, I'm quitting. I'm signing off. <laughs> so Johnny Hen Hendrix? Hendrix? Johnny Mayer Drix. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like Anger, a good old, a good old she smiles towering in. Shiny metal, Nobody cares. Purple Nobody armor, cares whatever. The song. Nobody cares. Uh, so. <laughs> jealousy, angry, behind me. Oh my god. Fire green galaxy is off the classic ground. Nobody, nobody knows what you're talking about. All right, Ooh, so. I got a laugh. Oh my Give god, he's still going. <laughs> 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 All right, and I added a fart to that one. Um, <laughs> after the classic rock one, we'll do uh, the first time classic rock songs one. Rock songs. Uh, we'll do a, the first time ever. We're gonna do a what's called a contender profile, where we just talk about somebody's body of work, um, whether it be a director, an actor, or a contributor in some other medium, I guess. And uh, we just fucking chat about it, cause like you know, sometimes you don't want to rank things. You just want to fucking talk about it. You know, like what it means to be that person, uh, what their work means to them, basically. And uh, we're gonna do it with Steven Spielberg, cause that's an easy one. Ready Player One. It will be coming out by that point. 
Yeah. Uh, so that'll be that's going to be a fun one, and he's got a great uh, he's got a great filmography. That one, a very very arranging one uh, from comedies to fantasies to sci fi to uh, when he's I guess he's about to do his first musical with the fucking West Side Story remake that I don't want, but I'll weird. still watch. Weird. Um, but that's what's yeah, coming after that. Weird one. To me. And uh, so stay tuned for we got we got some great episodes. That's what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say to you guys, we got some great we got some great episodes. All right, so uh, stay tuned for all that shit and uh, find some skirp and on the derp and uh, the back. <laughs>